Stevie Boy is one of those amazing partners that I get to work with on a daily basis. So um, we kind of just wanted to get to know you a little bit more, Stevie, like why sunglasses? How did you get into the industry? What inspires you? How do you make a name for yourself? All that good, interesting behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I started uh, back in 2009. Um, you know, my entire career is, is hilarious to me because I went to school for criminal justice. That's why I was going to follow the family trend and do that. But I ended up just making product for myself. Um, this is back during MySpace days before Facebook and stuff. <laughs> so, like, people were just so interested in my, like, you know, quote unquote fashions. And um, people were like, you should probably, like, sell your products. But I never like put the effort into it or even tried or attempted to until I made a pair of sunglasses, wore them to the club. There was a popular British female rapper by the name of Lady Sovereign. I don't know if people still remember her. And um, she was actually Missy Elliott's protege at the time. And she was very underground. And I wasn't dancing in the crowd. And she literally pointed at me and took my sunglasses off of my face from the crowd wore them the next day there was in a Baltimore Sun newspaper on the cover I believe and um they were doing like a musical like article type of thing highlighting all the artists that performed that night and her picture happened to make it and people recognized it were my sunglasses locally in Baltimore City which is a very artsy town and um, I made a website and then I've just got thousands and thousands of orders to the point where I had to like make a decision between staying in college and focusing on that while working a job and I just moved into a new loft downtown Baltimore as well. So I was going through this weird transition situation going on. So I just ended up taking, you know, the initiative and turning, you know, my talent into a job. And uh, that's what happened. Wow. That's incredible. I, yeah. I think that, that like, I feel like that kind of sets the tone because one of the things that I love when we were kind of pulling this all together is like, you're not just one thing. You're like a multi-dimensional. like, I love the cookbook. I love the sunglasses. I think that like, you're such a creative person that it's really cool to see that that was kind of the way that you really got your start um, into yes. this. So that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's been, it's been a roller coaster because it's like, you, you want to do one thing and then you want to do another thing. And you thought it's always so interesting how like you start off thinking you're going to do something and then just all of a sudden just things change. But one thing about me, I'm a solutionist. So instead of complaining about it, I just found a way to juggle everything, and you know, make it happen for me and my team and everybody else around me. So the sunglasses was kind of just by chance, like it kind of just took off. You were right place, right time type of situation, right? Exactly. You know, two things from the beginning of what I was saying was I was standing in the crowd. Everyone's dancing. It's very like very hipster club scene, like Brooklyn type <laughs> thing in Baltimore. And I was just standing there, just staring like sober. Like I wasn't drinking at the time. I was just like staring. And um, it was funny. I never told anybody this before because I forgot. But at the time, my boyfriend was like, oh, don't wear those sunglasses. Why do you wear sunglasses to club? I was like, no, I need to be seen. So I feel like if I did not actually take the chance and the opportunity to like step out and be fearless, then she probably would have not recognized me. And then that I would not have a thing. So shout out to my ex. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's make it known to everyone that like wear the thing you want to wear, be mm -hmm. seen the way you want to be seen, because I think that is yeah. like a testament to just expressing yourself. Like you got to do what makes you feel good, what makes you feel alive. I think that's that's super cool. Yeah, Especially in like these times when like, you know, maybe you're just going to the grocery store. So wear that sparkly dress, wear those sunglasses, yes. dress to the nines because yeah. it's your time to shine. <laughs> Absolutely. I totally agree. Well, I think oh, one thing, oh, oh sorry, Jess, no, go okay. ahead, take it away. No, no, it's okay, you go. <laughs> um, you know, Zoom. Um, I think one of the things that I'm interested in and just kind of pivoting more towards your cookbook. Like, how did you kind of pivot? Like, was this something that you always wanted to do? Um, I know that, like we just mentioned, you do a lot of amazing creative things. So was this something that just kind of happened by chance, similarly to sunglasses? Or was this something that you've always been kind of passionate about? 
Well, I'll give you a couple bullet points. Yes. Um, <laughs> the reason why the book is called International Soul is because I am from Georgia. So that's where the soul part comes from. But but I was raised overseas, Germany, Germany, London, Paris. I've done shows in Russia. I've done all these things. And I've been deemed and coined as an international fashion designer. So that's the title of the book itself. And I feel like it's very self-explanatory when I say it. But like otherwise, people are like, what does that mean? Um, but that's that's the thing. I got to a point where I think around like my ninth year mark of being in the fashion industry, I wanted people to know that I do eat. I get it. I'm skinny. I, I may not look like I, I don't eat or whatever, but I actually do. And what's another fun fact is here's the other bullet point. I cook for all my models uh, at certain shows. Like if I do like an intimate show, like how this conversation is intimate. Um, I'll, I'll cook for the models, like I'll cater myself and they love it. And I work with the same models for going on like 10, 12 years, actually, even before I was a designer, when I was modeling. So like they know about my cooking. So it's like they don't even come like to like really do a fashion thing. It's just like, what are you cooking? What are you cooking? <laughs> so it's nice to have that sense of community, too, you know, in the industry. And I was like, you know what, maybe I should take this a little bit more serious and write a book about it and include everything internationally I did. And also like my Southern heritage as well in there. Um, so that's how, you know, the book came about and how the cooking and everything came about. I kind of intertwined fashion with food, um, in which, you know, it's kind of taboo topic because in the fashion industry, you know, they like, oh, don't eat anything but like a peanut and drink water. But in, 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 in my shows, no, I'm serving chicken wings. We're going to eat oxtails. If you're a vegan, don't worry. I got vegan fried chicken, too. Like I have it all. Because <laughs> like, I like it's, I think that's a Southern quality, making sure that people eat, you know. That's so awesome. I mean, I, I'm just stunned because I, I, again, I, I'll go back to this, but I think it's just so cool how you're not just one sided. There's so many different dimensions and things. And um, I love the, the combination, like you said, of fashion with food, which I think is a perfect segue into kind of doing a little bit more of a deep dive into some of your recipes, which we yes. um, are going to showcase here. So um, I'd love you to kind of start us off with um, the first recipe that we have. If you want to hit the next, oh, we can't forget. <laughs> um, let's just take a moment. Like, let's just take a moment and appreciate this cover. Cause I think that this is yeah. like so <laughs> strong and fierce. And I Thank think that this is like the perfect embodiment of what you're saying, fashion and food. Like you get yes. it. Um, yes. I got the power sign up with a green tomato. And if, as you know, in the South, we love fried green tomatoes. I mean, you see the hair, you see everything, you see the ploys, and then you see the food in the background. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> that. Because I actually made that cover. I, I'm going to be really honest with you. I was in North Carolina when I did this cover with Don Harris at Hard Press Studios, where I work all the time and shoot everything. And um, I was like, let's drink and let's shoot the cover of the book. Because I had the book already done. I just never got to shoot the cover and by the way, this wasn't even going to be called International Soul. It was just going to be basically called Stevie Boy Eats. And it was going to be very generic with not even a picture of me on the book. But then, um, you know, that good wine, it helps. It just got me creative. <laughs> it made me change the perspective. And then also with the times and everything that's going on with Black Lives Matter and just a long list of a lot of other things and just our climate and, you know, the administration and everything that was happening, I was like, let me make a bold statement and get people's attention just with the cover. So I treated it like a magazine cover, like a Vogue or L mm -hmm. or, you know, or something like that, or Essence. I, I wanted it to give Essence as well with the way I depicted myself. And I think I did a good job. I think you, you did, did amazing. a great job. <laughs> and I love the two other pictures too. I don't know, you just look so natural and so happy in, in the kitchen and like, you know, chatting. And I feel like that's what food and fashion kind of, it kind of connects people, you know? Yes, thank you. We shot, that was shot in Lancaster County, um, Amish country. And that was really, really interesting. And I, that's a whole other story, but just shout out <laughs> to the Amish people, the Amish families out there because they were very... I mean, they provided all the food. They gave me fresh eggs and everything. I shot that on a farm, by the way. Wow. Yeah. So many interesting avenues you've gone down and lived. <laughs> That's why it's international. You got to yeah. be open-minded <laughs> to working with so many different people, you know? Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so let's deep dive into the first recipe here. Okay. Um, we have the watermelon salad with feta arugula and balsamic. Um, can you okay. give us a little insight into why you added this dish into the cookbook? Okay. So, um, you know, in the South, 
watermelon is a big key component during cookouts, during, uh, well, cookouts, barbecues, whatever you call it, depending on where you're from. Um, but I wanted to like bougie it up. I've been called bougie my whole life from family members, friends, because I do certain things. Like, for example, I eat Cheetos with chopsticks. People laugh at me. I don't want to get cheese on my What's wrong with that? Um, but I decided to grill the, the watermelon, in which adds a nice, uh, like, kind of like natural sugar layer to it. Um, and I added the arugula and the balsamic vinegar um, and then the feta cheese. And this is not too far fetched of a recipe. This is actually something that is kind of like um, has been around. I just changed it up with, you know, grilling it and adding feta. Um, some people, you know, don't really add the cheese, but I thought that feta was strong enough to, you know, mix with the flavors and not, you know, soak up all that juice and type of stuff, you know. So. It's really good, though. My friends actually enjoyed it. It's, it's just a nice little treat, you know? I call it a treat. It's almost like candy, really, like a candy salad. Is that a thing? <laughs> should, I, should I call it a candy salad? <laughs> it's very much a thing. Um, no, yeah. I, this, I think by the end of this, I'm going to need a snack or another lunch or something because I'm already um, getting hungry again. Um, <laughs> and we, we're only on the first recipe. Yeah. <laughs> get better and better. Um, on the next slide, we actually did something fun where we're pairing each recipe um, with an actual sunglass that you've created. Um, can you tell us why you picked out this particular one for this recipe? Now, I want to grab something right quick. Yes, please do. So, you would think, <laughs> so the reason why I grabbed, because the glasses the original was going to go with this were going to be these. <laughs> yes. But I thought it was way too futuristic and way too strong. So what I ended up doing was choosing something yellow because it brings sunshine. And I thought it brings a, a lot of happiness. And I also thought about the fact that when you're outside, you got that yellow, you know, sun going on and this, that, and the third. And that's another reason why I took these off because I was like, oh, it's too much red. I'm not trying to sell a different <laughs> message, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, I don't want people to burn up eating a salad. I want them to enjoy it. So it just brings like a nice level of sunshine and you know, happiness to it. I couldn't agree more. So this is the next one, which I am like obsessed with because it's such a cool like plating. And like, do you have any tips on how to plate this? Like, do we have to have the pineapple? Is that like a necessary, a key component? Or could mm -hmm. we cut up some pineapple? Okay. So I was just wondering if you had any tips. So originally, and a lot of people would, uh, probably recognize this, but there's a lot of history behind actually this dish. It, it, it's not even about me. This is the Hawaiian dish, an Asian dish, a Caribbean dish, like really. Um, like in Hawaii, they have like, they the way I cut it is, is the way I just made it. I wanted to make like a bowl, but the way you're supposed to do is actually slice the pineapple in full halves and gut it out. And then you, um, you can, you use that to create like a teriyaki sauce, like a pineapple teriyaki sauce. You can do it however you want. What I did was I decided to make it a little bit more Caribbean. So that's why I added the rice and sweet peas. And I used uh, yellow rice, speaking of. Um, and then I added some shrimp and then I added some lime. Um, just, you know, spice it up. And it actually is spicy because I thought it will be too sweet with the pineapple. So there is some Caribbean flavor in there as well. A nice balance. It looks yeah. delicious. I'm ready to go to the Caribbean or Hawaii and eat one. And the pineapple is grilled too. <laughs> and now I can just make it in my house. If I get your cookbook, I can bring that to yeah. California. <laughs> Absolutely. So what inspired pairing these two together? Um. So uh, here we go. That's actually a good question. I, I kind of said it in regards to the, the aspect that it's Caribbean. So I was thinking of like just brown. I was thinking of brown. I was thinking of tinted. I was thinking of like just really, really cool, like out in the sun. Like I could see like someone wearing these sunglasses with the bowl in their hand, just eating it. I couldn't <laughs> see like bright sunglasses. I see something just really, really cool, you know, sitting on the side of like the beach or something like that with no shoes on and, you know, you know, legs crossed, like that type of thing. That's what it was giving. Yeah, I totally see that. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the third recipe, we have your jerk spaghetti and meat sauce. Um, mm -hmm. Give us some insight. I think this is such a unique, I personally was like, ooh, I'm interested in this. Like just the title alone. Like I'm like, tell me more, what is in this? Like, how do I make this? Um, do you wanna give us a little bit of insight into kind of 
this um, recipe and why you were excited yeah. to include it? So I lived in Italy and um, it, well, I didn't really live there. I was there for like three months, but I guess that's considered living, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, all throughout different parts. And I wanted to, I really enjoyed the authentic seat, authenticity, sorry. Uh, it's, my, it's my tumor in tea, y'all. It, it catch the tongue. Uh, I swear it's tea. I promise it's only tea, okay? <laughs> but I enjoyed how authentic the Italian food was. But I was like, what happens if they made it spicy? So then I started thinking about, like, J- the Jamaican culture, which is Caribbean as well. So I just took a regular, schmegler, degler, you know, Italian recipe, and I just added some jerk seasoning to it. Um, however, I added some... Um, some bell peppers in there and even a scotch bonnet pepper. So it is quite spicy. However, you can take out the scotch bonnet. You don't have to have all of that. I just thought it would be interesting to, um, to, to mix the two, but there's a thing that I do to regular spaghetti that a lot of people don't do and don't tell anybody. So don't tell anybody. Add hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes when I, I get, you ever had leftover spaghetti and you, you kind of like tired of eating it. So you just start adding things. I just add like regular Texas peat hot sauce to it. And I do another thing that a lot of people think is gross. Sometimes I like squirt ranch on the spaghetti. There you go. Hey, don't yuck someone's yum. I think if that's what you like, you do you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's actually a very popular thing in the South, believe it or not. People just don't admit it outside of their house. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, insider tip you heard it here oh my God. it's so short sure. i know someone actually agreed with me it was like yes it is <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> oh, there we go confirmation in the chat everyone yeah <laughs> um so can you again give us these i think are just like a statement shade like you own whatever room you walk into with this with these shades so can you tell us a little bit about this pairing well, you hit the nail on the head. If you're going to be uh, making jerk spaghetti, you need to go ahead and walk in the room with some protection. Yeah. Uh, people are going to look at you kind of funny. And uh, But these glasses were just a statement with this. I just thought boldness, um, because I know this recipe will go over some people's heads. And I'm like, nah, just, you know, stick with regular spaghetti. But like you said, uh, Jessica, I believe that was you, because I'm, I'm on the screen right now, so I can't see you. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just think it was just boldness um boldness I, I think also it's futuristic because i'm over here mixing elements together that usually people would not traditionally do so you know futurism with boldness uh creates a jerk spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> definitely oh so like this is one of my favorite things in the world mm-hmm. nothing is better than like a good deviled egg, but mm-hmm. I've noticed you added a little something to make it your own Stevie Boy twist. So how did yeah. you come up with this, like adding the sriracha? Okay, <clears throat> so the <laughs> sriracha was just, be- I love sriracha. The reason why I added sriracha, and it's not a lot, I think it's a uh, season of taste, uh, if you will, but I added the sriracha just because I, I grew up, you know, Southern. So eating like deviled eggs was just so, like, you know, normal for me to the point where I kind of like lost the taste buds for it. So I just one day decided to add hot. So we was playing around with this recipe too, by the way, for months. And um, I decided to drop deviled eggs. And there's a reason why. And it's not because of like religion or anything like that. It's not that deep. (laughs) I actually got inspired by Katy Perry because she said when she was growing up that her parents refused to say deviled eggs. So they just called them like, heavenly eggs or something so that was my inspiration behind that but i still call them deviled eggs i'm just so so nobody thinks i'm being weird i just thought it would be like a little <laughs> inside joke you know for people to read the book they're like why he called them heavenly eggs and they got some watching they really deviled <laughs> yeah extra deviled eggs <laughs> extra deviled eggs all right uh, that's that's gonna be in the next book extra deviled okay eggs. <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited um so i can kind of see the correlation between the two shades because you know, um, yeah, but well, why, why did you pick these ones? <laughs> um, you know, I just, I just was looking at the color yellow. Um, Definitely. just yellow. I, I don't, I don't really like have a, um, you know, story behind the glasses with, with the, uh, heavenly eggs, heavenly sriracha eggs. Uh, but I think just the glasses just fit that, you know, at the time. Sometimes color is like the most important thing, right? So. 
If yes. the two colors matched and you just rolled with it. <laughs> One of the most important elements that you must have when you're, you know, doing something. You need color. Definitely. Fashion or food. Yeah. Oh my God, this is my favorite. <laughs> yes, the, the favorite uh, left for last. So this is our last recipe that we're featuring. Um, I just got to, I got to know, you had me at the pair. Um, please give us all of your insider tips with, uh, with this recipe here. Okay. This is really fun. I love this recipe because every time I make it for my family, they always, the first time I made it for any of anybody in general, they didn't understand what I was doing. And by the way, you can substitute the pear with an apple. Specifically, I would prefer green apples, not red apples, so they get soggy faster. You need a nice firm pear and a nice firm apple, okay? What you do is you cut it in half, you gut it out, you add in your good old, get ready for it, a pinch of salt. Not a lot of salt, a pinch. And you gotta go like that, like salt bag. Um, <laughs> because you don't want it salty. And then you add in your brown sugar. Pinch that as well. Um, and then you can add in white sugar. I don't really uh, use white sugar anymore in my recipes. I just stick with brown sugar or natural honey, um, and which is also in there. And then obviously you put it into the oven and you cook it for about, I don't know, maybe 45 to an hour, depending on the size. Um, and all you gotta do is also just poke it, let it sit and cool naturally on the counter. Do not put it in the refrigerator. And then you can top it with ice cream and whatever other toppings that you would like to. And as you can see, I sprinkled some more um, cinnamon at the top. So I, I call it a deconstructed um, Southern pear bake or Southern apple bake based off of the fact that I grew up eating apple pie and pie in general. That's another Southern factor. Um, but nobody has time to make an entire pie when you just <laughs> eat just for yourself. So... I came up with it, honestly, out of being selfish because I just wanted a pie for myself at my place by <laughs> myself. And um, it actually worked out. And it, it's, I, I tried to Google it. I couldn't find too many recipes that were similar to it. But um, I mean, there's some out there, but mine is just really, really easy. Some people want you to soak it overnight and all types of stuff and brine. I'm like, okay, you're doing team way too much. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I came up with that. Just by being selfish <laughs> for myself. <laughs> Late night cravings are serious. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like sometimes you just want that slice of pie and that's not realistic. So this is like yeah. even better than the pie that you would make for, for your, for everyone. It's just for you, you know? So yeah. you make it the way you want it. Um, yeah. Awesome. And then we have this lovely pair, a little bit of color, some bling. Can you tell us about this pairing? Yes. So like I said, late night cravings, I was feeling very pink inside and I was feeling very bright. So that's where they came. Um, I did, that's the first pair of sunglasses that came to me um, with that. Um, I could have did some brown sunglasses or, you know, some white ones or some, you know, other colorful ones. But this right here actually just made me just feel really pink inside and very soft. I mean, that's how you kind of feel when you're sitting down on the couch watching a movie all by yourself. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, you feel like, oh my God, what am I doing? But then at the time you end it, you're like, oh my gosh, that was good. I feel great. And then you're happy. I was going to say, <laughs> these sunglasses make me feel how I think I would feel when I would be eating the deconstructed pear. Just like good yes. and like warm and yummy so. yes and happy <laughs> totally. key component <laughs>